priority optics. Priority is see, uh, priority seeing a distance intermediate or near. Do they want full spectral equipment independence or are they okay with wearing glasses for some activities? We try to understand how patients want to use their eyes and the best way to do this is by learning what the patient's daily life is like, what they want out of their vision. It could be monofocals, monofocal plus, multifocals, trifocals, edof lenses, CRV accommodating lenses. Value determination. Here again, the monofocals are usually covered with cataract surgery by insurance, but insurance uh, companies don't uh, provide uh, premium IOLs. Uh, 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 in that case, the patient has to bear the full expense from out of the pocket. Patient must understand that there's an elective portion to this as well as a medical portion. The more patients understand before surgery, the more empowered they are to make their own decision and feel like they are part of the process. Pre-operative refractive error. One of the major factors to consider in IOL selection is besides personality is the patient's pre-operative refractive error. Moderate myopes between minus 2 and minus 4D are used to taking off the glasses and uh, being able to see up close. They basically got a telescope built into their eyeball. If, if you take away these patients a near vision, they are be, will, will be very upset. High myopes also will have to be very careful while selecting the lenses. Young patients, when faced with a young patient who is a cataract or young refractive lens extension patient, think about what might happen in the next 20 or 40 years of the patient's life when he selects an IOA. Refractive lens exchange may have a perfectly healthy eye at a time, but we don't know what their eyes will look like after 20 years in case of epiretinal membrane, macular edema, diabetic retinopathy. We will have to take care of this. Then, of course, the ocular um, comorbidities like uh, uh, surface dryness, myoboing gland debris, uh, astigmatism, chronic dystrophies. This has to be taken care, especially if you are uh, advising a multifocal intraocular lenses. And, of course, you have to keep, care, keep in mind the previous refractive surgery, if he has done, undergone a radial keratotomy, LASIK, RK, a PRK, uh, various formulas are there. ACRS, IOL power calculation uh, uh, formulas are there. Uh, take care of these things before you advise uh, any intraocular lenses in patients who have under, already undergone previous, previous refractive surgery. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tandrand, for the detailed counseling talk. Next, we will have Dr. Ranish Madhavan. He will be speaking on uh, enhanced uh, monofocals. Uh, Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. So my topic is on enhanced monofocal. You know that uh, nowadays in your practice, you know most of the companies are coming and bombarding with uh, one term called EDOF, and again enhanced monofocals. Now we have a confusion: which one to choose, right? So it's usually in premium IOL services, it is a, a tailor-made approach. You have to understand what's the requirement of the patient, and accordingly you have to choose. Otherwise, you will get uh, end up with an unhappy patient. So first you know what is, uh, uh, what is each lens and what they provide. About the uh, enhanced monofocal, if you visually see, there is no difference between the two lenses you see. Here you can see two lenses, one is an uh, enhanced monofocal, another is a, just a monofocal. See these two lenses look similar, so visually it looks very similar, but how this enhanced monofocal work is actually it is nothing it is just a monofocal lens just the one mm the central one mm of the lens the anterior asphericity is being made high order or the uh, surface is made in such a way that there is a gradual increment of power is given only in the center you can see here you know this green thing is there only that one mm area is having power the rest is just like a monofocal only so that area can give up to plus 0.5 to maybe plus 0.75 extra power that is what is the what we called as enhanced monofocal now in my practice i usually use the lens which is uh, j and j's uh, eye hand so i can only talk about that because that's my experience this is a picture which shows that this is the MTF, you know, this modulation transfer function of the lens. Now you see this lens, 
This one is uh, this monofocal, that is technus monofocal, and this is the eye hands, that is enhanced monofocal. Here you can see the graph going, you know, this is the emetropia, LX0, the graph is at the peak, the monofocal gives the maximum thing in emetropia, that is in the distance vision, and then it sharply drops down at around 2 meters. After that, it is there is no line. But what eye hands do, or whatever this enhanced monofocal do is, it it gives a little extension here, no? So it comes up to 1.5 defocusing. That means up to 67 centimeter, it gives a uh, it gives a little bit power there. But there is a slight compromise in the distance vision, very slight compromise, which is negligible. But this area is good that the patient get around a 67 centimeter of intermediate vision. Never think that these lenses will give near vision. It won't give near vision, but at least 60 centimeter is good. Because for females, usually when they do the work in the kitchen, no, the working distance is almost 60 centimeter, which is a good thing. And again, nothing is done here. See, you can see whatever area taken from this distance has been added here. That's all. It's just taken and added there. And this area is the area where that's that, that extra intermediate power has been given. I'll just show you this is uh, eye hands lens implantation. Why I am showing is you see this, this is a eye hands lens and there's nothing much difference. It's just like a technus lens. Even if, if the sister gives you a technus lens, also you, the surgeon cannot uh, differentiate. So this is just like that, but the central area is having a power. And there is one more is there. Clarion is also there. This is from Alcon, but the Clarion comes with a, a preload. So this, this is the injector which usually they give, they have a uh, CO2 gas is there, it is a self, you have just pressed it, the gas will push the IOL, this is the Clarion lens and you can see, just you push the plunger, it automatically the gas will push the IOL and uh, the delivery is very smooth in uh, Clarion, see the delivery is very fine, the, both the lenses are enhanced monofocals. Now. Then now the question comes is what is IDOF? What is the difference between IDOF? What IDOF is doing is just look at this graph previous and compare with the previous graph. IDOF what it do is it adds extra power, uh, power at this area and reduces the distance vision a little bit. A considerable reduction contrast loss in the emetropia zero and that area has been added here. So the graph has gone little more. So it comes to up to around 2, minus 2, minus 2. Point. This increase in the depth of focus gives a more better intermediate maybe the intermediate will be about 50 and sometimes I, I have never seen in my practice that an of lens gives near vision maybe but they can give it to 50 centimeter so here the intermediate vision is little better than the enhanced monofocal but the contrast loss is lit high in edof so that's what i say it depends upon what patient needs and it, uh, accordingly you have to choose and how it works is edof is usually the if you look at the lens you will understand there is something different so this is uh, symphony. Here they have the step pattern in the uh, posterior aspect and that step pattern is giving that diffractive elongated focal point. And this is how the symphony looks like. So because of these rings, definitely the patient will have glare and they have some kind of halos 